What's up, everybody? Jacob here, JK Productions. Hope you all enjoyed the All Star Weekend. Uh, it was it was all right. Three point contest was good. It was nice to see Damian Lillard win. Uh, dunk contest. Mac McClung was very entertaining. That actually was better than I expected it to be. Uh, and then the All Star game. Bam Adebayo, you know, just ran up and ran up the floor the whole time. Twenty four minutes, four points. Uh, so you know, we're here to talk about the Heat. He did pretty much nothing. And the game, like Jalen Brown said, it was just a glorified layup contest, and it's really gotten to be that. Like, you'll see some nice dunks. You'll see LeBron make a cool move uh, and then get hurt. Uh, but it, it, it is what it is. We know it, it. they don't take it serious. There's no defense whatsoever, and I don't want to be an old man too much on it, but it just was not entertaining to watch. It took like an hour from the time the draft happened for the game to actually start. What are they doing? Anyways, not what I'm here to complain about. What I'm here to complain about is what happened earlier on in the day, and that was something that had kind of been building up for a few days. So Kevin Love was cut and was going to be passing through waivers. Uh, no one's picking up that contract, of course. So hits the market, and the Miami Heat signed him. And before I get into what I am mad about, which unfortunately a lot has been happening that's made me mad about the Miami Heat recently, uh, before I get mad, Kevin Love in itself is not a bad signing. He, he provides the ability to stretch the floor. He's a 38% uh, shooter, 35% from three. Uh, his numbers have deteriorated, o- deteriorated over the years. Just over eight points per game this year was in double digits for the entirety of his career up to this point. Uh, and has significantly dropped off a cliff, which you, you expect from a player of his age. He's been in the league since 2008. He's been around. He's won championships with the, the championship with the Cleveland Cavaliers and kind of expected him to join a more solidified uh, playoff NBA championship bound team, but he joins the Miami Heat and just the signing unto itself. I'm not that upset about because it does help. However, Kevin Love, as well as looks like Cody Zeller's joining Big Whoop De Doo, uh, is just another example of what the Miami Heat have done in recent times when it comes to bringing in players. Have always wanted this team to go out over the last few years and go get that big fish. Go get Bradley Beal. Go get Zach Levine. Go get DeMar DeRozan. Uh, recently, in the last year or so, go get Kevin Durant. Kyrie Irving, great player, head case. Is it worth it? I think it might be. Um, Donovan Mitchell going to the Cleveland Cavaliers. He went to Cleveland. He went to Cleveland, where Kevin Love just came from, and the Miami Heat didn't pursue. And that's what my biggest pet peeve with the Miami Heat have been recently. The Heat are dead last in scoring output in the NBA. That is below obviously, below everybody, but painting it out, that's below the Pistons, that's below the Rockets, that's below some of the worst teams in the league, below the Magic, the Miami Heat are below in scoring output, and they just brought in a mid-30s, declining, aging, big man, why, why is that where we are going, the signing on itself is not necessarily a bad signing, he's cheap, you bring somebody in, it's better than not bringing anybody else in. Okay. I sat here, what was it, two weeks ago, a week ago, whatever it was, and went over what the Miami Heat could do in the trade deadline. I obviously talked about uh, some of the bigger name guys, like the Bradley Beals, like the Zach Levines. Some people even like Jay Crowder, who used to be on the Heat, who isn't necessarily a star player, but can definitely benefit this team, without a doubt. Uh, Kelly, Kelly Olynyk, and that's... I don't know if I brought him up in the video, but that was somebody who I, I saw mentioned with Heat Trade Talks, bringing him in. I was not a fan at all of Kelly Olynyk, but at this point, I take Kelly Olynyk, and it, it it pains me to say that because of how low we are in desperate need for offense. It's ridiculous. Another trade deadline comes and goes. Another offseason comes and goes, and the Miami Heat just simply refuse to address the biggest issue on the team. Last year, we lose the, lose the opportunity to go on to the NBA Finals because Jimmy Butler misses a three-pointer, and we go on to lose to Celtics in, in Game 7. They go on to lose to the Warriors, and the rest is history. I was not upset in the moment. Well, maybe maybe upset's not the right way to, way to put it. I was not mad in the moment because you go into the season, and if you tell me our best player has an opportunity to hit a three to win the game to go on to the NBA championship as our as we're in Game Seven of the M- of the Eastern Conference Finals, if you tell me our best player has opportunity to hit a decently open three pointer to take us to the NBA Finals, I'm taking that without question. If you tell me that's how the season unfolds, Jimmy Butler, open three pointer, 
He makes it. He goes to the NBA Finals. You tell me that's the script before the season starts. I'm taking that without a doubt, 100%. He's not supposed to be taking that shot. That is not what he does. He's a fantastic player. He's one of the best players in the league. I love Jimmy Butler. He's probably my favorite player in the NBA right now. I love Jimmy Butler. He's not supposed to be taking that shot. Tyler Hero, I wish, would have developed his game to the point that he's trusted with the ball in late game situations. But here we are in year four with him. And he's we've seen improvement with Tyler Hero. But it's not to the point that we feel comfortable in those moments giving him the ball. I mean, how long did it take him to even start games in the NBA for the Miami Heat? Let alone be trusted in big game opportunities you know, to get us to the NBA Finals. It's taken forever to get that with him. I'd argue we still aren't there confidence-wise with him, comfortability with him yet to be taking those big shots. Bam Adebayo. I love Bam Adebayo. We know what he is. We know what he isn't. What he isn't is his dynamic score. He's added to his game. His mid-range game has gotten so much better every single year he's got into the league. I love Bam Adebayo. I think he, he, he deserves he and we're, we rightfully gave him that extension because he is... Probably our second best player, even over Tyler Hero. What he is not is somebody you are going to give the ball to when you're down by three with a minute and a half to go. That's not where you're going. This team doesn't have that guy. Jimmy Butler's had to been that guy when that's not just naturally who he is. Jimmy Butler's a dog. Jimmy Butler is an absolute dog. He's not supposed to be given the ball when you are needing offense. And this team continues to neglect the offensive side of the ball, and I don't understand how. I don't understand why. We are hanging on by a thread, not even hanging on by a thread, actually. We've fallen into the play-in games, half game behind the uh, the Knicks right now, 10 and a half games back, I believe it is, and still no moves to the trade deadline. The answer to all our problems is Kevin Love. I like Kevin Love. I think he can be a, a decent addition to this team. I think moving on from Dwayne Dedman, who did virtually nothing, and bringing in Kevin Love and Cody Zeller, if you just look at that for what that is, I think it's great basketball. I think it's great management in that microcosm by itself. Just those few moves by themselves, I think, are great moves. What I can't help but come to the realization of is Pat Riley is holding this team back. Pat Riley, one of the greatest NBA minds of all time has helped the Miami Heat get to the point where they are. I'm sure he was a huge point of what got LeBron here in the first place. His basketball acumen, bringing in Dwayne Wade, building this team like he has, being able to find all these undrafted free agents, and then, you know, some of them don't pan out. Duncan Robinson hasn't panned out. Max Struess, while he's cheap, is doing decent for us. Gabe Vincent is a, is a rotational player. He's good at those. He's good at finding those guys, and he's had the acumen, the charisma, to entice players in the past to come in. He doesn't have that anymore. And now, clearly, he doesn't have, I don't, I don't even know what the right word is, he doesn't have the gravitas to go out and just push all his chips in the middle and say, you know what, we're getting Bradley Beal. I don't care we're going to pay him $60 million a year. I don't care we're going to have to give Tyler Hero in 17 first-round picks or whatever it takes. That is our best chance to win a championship. Why, where, why are you hedging your bets? Why are you pulling back? Why are you holding on to the reins so tightly? This team is talented. This team doesn't probably have the, the, the players to move to add on in draft pack or trade packages. Like when the Suns went out and got Kevin Durant. We don't have a McCall Bridges that is a phenomenal young player that maybe is undershadowed being behind Devin Booker, Chris Paul, and would certainly be undershadowed behind Kevin Durant. We don't have a player like that. We have Tyler Hero, who we hope can emerge into a legitimate NBA star. It's still hope in this in this time. We have no guarantees on the offensive side of the floor every time we go down. It's so hard for the Heat to get a basket. It, it's, it's ridiculous how hard it is for the Miami Heat to have a good offense. Even when playing against bad teams, it shows up. It, it doesn't make sense. You are you are one of the most respected teams in the entire NBA. Even Pat Riley, you're the one of the most respected people in the NBA. And time and time again, over the last four or five years, you've let this team down. I I really respected when we when LeBron walked and he decided we're not going to go into rebuild mode. We're going to try next year. We make the playoffs. Uh, we beat the Hornets in the first round, and we lose to the Raptors. 
that really gave me hope as a Heat fan. I, like, oh, we're taking every season seriously. There's no such thing as tanking. There's no such thing as rebuilding. We're in a constant flux of trying to put the best talent on the floor as possible. That really gave me hope as a Heat fan when we lost LeBron. And bringing in Jimmy Butler, getting steals like Bam in the middle of the first round, uh, Tyler Hero in the middle of the first round, undrafted free agents like Duncan at the time, like Struess, like Gabe Vincent. We thought maybe Kyle Lowry getting him would, would bring some championship acumen coming just a couple years off of NBA championship. And what we've seen in the last couple years is just everything revert back onto itself. Everything collapse onto itself where it's like, maybe we should have just tanked. Maybe we should have tanked for Wembenyama. Maybe we should have tanked for Zion Williamson, uh, Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green, these, these emerging stars in the NBA. Zion's got the Pelicans looking really good. Cade Cunningham can't, can't stay healthy. Wembenyama's all but guaranteed to come in and be a bona fide star. The Heat, I believe, still think they have that mentality that they're trying to put the best talent on the floor at possible, but they're not willing to put their chips in. I like Kevin Love. Cody Zeller's all right. They're not championship moves. And if we're not talking about championships, then what are we doing?